Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our candidates forum this evening. Our candidates forum tonight is sponsored by the Front Ward of Warren County Chamber of Commerce. Before we start, we ask that you please mute or turn off your cell phone before we get underway this evening, if you would. Our guidelines are pretty simple, pretty basic, but the order of opening was determined by random selection. So each candidate will give a one-minute opening statement. We'll also be giving two minutes at the end for closing remarks. The questions asked of the candidates have been submitted to the Chamber of Commerce by the public or developed by representatives of the Chamber's Legislative Committee in the weeks leading up to the forum. It's very important to know that all questions will be issue-based and were read to the candidates by me, the moderator. No questions will be allowed directly from the audience member to the candidates. So if you happen to come across a question during the course of the evening and you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. You've been given paper and pen to present those questions and give them to our screeners here to my side. Candidates will have one minute to answer our questions this evening, unless otherwise indicated. The green light indicates, Mr. Melrath says that we've got, uh, you've got time to speak. The yellow light means you have 20 seconds left. Red light means your time is up. I want to be nice, I want to play nice, so let's see if we can try to keep it as close to that as we possibly can. If we have to interrupt you, then we, we may have to do that, but uh, hope we won't have to do that, and no rebuttals will be allowed this evening. This uh, forum tonight being recorded by Dwayne Coates, where we plan its entirety on the Government Access Channel number 16. Our forum tonight is again for the Front Royal Town Council. There are six candidates for three seats. Those candidates are Alfred D. Carter III, Gary Gillespie, Chris Holloway, Christopher Morrison, Robert Tennant Jr., and Latasha Thompson. So we welcome you all this evening and look forward to hearing what you have to say for us tonight. We'll begin with our opening statements, and Mr. Holloway, you'll start us off. Thank you. Um, well, I am Chris Holloway. Uh, I'd like to thank the Chamber tonight for hosting this forum. Um, I'm married, two children, have four grandchildren. I was born and raised here in Front Royal. Uh, I'm a small business owner. Uh, I'm the past president of the Front Royal Soccer Association, former member of the Warren County Parks and Recreation Committee, and I also coached at Skyline High School. And I was on town council from 2008 to 2012, uh, the latter two years as vice mayor. Uh, I've seen many changes taking place here in our community, and some good, some not so good. And I feel we have great opportunities here, and I just want to be part of those changes. Thank you. All right, next slide drawing, Mr. Gillespie. My name is Gary Gillespie, and I currently serve on council with your help in November, I can continue working for our community. I was appointed to council in August 2017, and it has been my honor to serve the town of Front Royal. I will keep working with council to bring businesses to our town, make improvements to the infrastructure, and bring workforce housing to our community. Bringing in businesses will help keep our taxes low and bring tax dollars to our town to help to repair sidewalks and paved roads. I believe town council should always work to find ways to cut people's taxes instead of looking for ways to increase taxes. I think tax increases should always be a last resort. And I share my parents' financial philosophy. If you don't have it, don't spend it. It's that plain and simple. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tennant. Hello, my name is Robert Tennant, Jr. I'm a lifelong <coughs> resident of Front Royal. Uh, I've been a private contractor most of my life. And uh, I'd like to come to the council and bring my experiences and do the best for everybody in the community. Uh, that's all I can say. So all right, so thank you. Mrs. Thompson? Hi, I'm Natasha Thompson, lifelong resident here in Front Royal. Um, I am a mother also and a wife. I have a uh, blended family with four kids, wrestling in their life. Uh, if you know Tristan Thompson, the little guy, that's mine. Um, and uh, I'm just very passionate about our town. I want to be here to see the changes that need to happen, uh, be a friend of business, um, of course, keep our taxes as low as possible, and uh, all of those good things. Um, I also volunteer with the United Way, the Society of Emerging, Leader, Emerging Leaders, PTO Mom, and um, I serve as a sales administrator at the trucks company where I think on a multi-million dollar budget for her model homes, builder rebates, cooperative marketing. 
that's just a little bit about me. Thank you. Mr. Morrison. Thank you. Should not have the mic. Well, I want to say good evening. Thank you, everybody, for showing up. I would suspect that you're here because you care about the town as much as I do. Uh, I am a, what they call, I guess, a uh, come along or whatnot, but I chose Front Royal. And beyond that, a little introduction before my time runs out. I proudly served in the military for many years, and uh, I am currently a federal employee. I serve on this council with Gary Jalepsky, and uh, I want to continue these multiple questions that we're going to address to find out more about myself and my leadership. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And finally, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I know this is important to you, and it's extremely important to me. Number one, let me tell you what you're going to vote for. You're going to vote for a man who's a Vietnam veteran, a self-employed business owner, I'm also the president of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, but I'm conservative, Christian-based. And the other thing that I like about that most of all is I'm pro-life. Now, I don't like to say a lot about what I do, but one thing I have learned, I'm in front of us, and as for me and my house, we choose to serve the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our closing statements will go in the exact opposite of words we did in the opening statements this evening, so we'll just keep you guys a heads up. All right, we've got questions for the candidates. You'll have one minute to answer each question, and we will start with Mr. Gillespie. You've been elected. What is your number one priority while serving on council? Thank you. Um, my number one priority on council is uh, to continue to keep working with council on, uh, on bringing businesses to our community. I, you know, a little story about myself. I, I've been here ever since the um, Aztec meal had, had closed. And there's really has been nothing else coming um, back to our community. And um, there's a lot of us who, who drive to the city every day to go to work. Because, you know, there, there are some businesses around here, but we need to bring in some, some manufacturing jobs that will help us um, to be able to, um, to continue our growth. Thank you so much. Mr. Ted, same question to you. You've been elected. What's your number one priority while serving on council? Uh, to, to, excuse me, to help out with tourism, try to get more business here in front of the oil, uh, and uh, to get more business here in front of oil. And also, I'd like to see how we can improve parking for Main Street. That's always been a thing here in front of oil. Uh, also, I'd like to see a lot of changes out from the 522 quarter. Thank you. All right. Mrs. Thompson, how about you? The number one thing I agree with Gary Gillespie is getting the jobs in here. Um, a majority of our households currently here are part of the Ellis population. They're working hard. They're just still struggling to make ends meet because of the lack of employment opportunities. And if we want to improve our town, we start, of course, with our people and get them employed in jobs that, uh, you know, pay livable wages, um, and they can dig them out of that hole. They're already working towards that. Let's let's help do that. Um, and of course, if you would improve those things, you would improve everything else. The shopping, the tourism, all of those things improve with that. Um, so definitely a top priority for me. And um, of course, being a friend to the small businesses who want to uh, start here. Um, to the businesses that are already here, um, not making it hard for them. Um, breaking down some of the barriers because self-employment is another perfect way to dig yourself out. Thank you. Mr. Morrison, you've been elected. What is your number one priority while serving on council? Quite simply, it's going to be infrastructure and economic development, but that is multiple with multiple phases to which accomplish such a, uh, such a task. Right? The thing is, Everyone talks about jobs, but we're not going to have jobs unless we have adequate housing. And we have to have adequate housing and affordable housing. And economic development, well, you need major corporations to come to this area. They're not going to come to this area unless they feel like the community is ready for that and they have the leadership behind it to support such. So, that's what I have. All right, sir, thank you. 
Mr. Carter, you've been elected. What's your number one priority while serving on council? My number one priority for Front Oil would be number one to dispel the notion that we are on the heroin highway. There's something wrong with that. Uh, I think we've got the minds, the intelligence, the law enforcement to address these issues, and it drags this town down. Now, uh, there are many other issues that feed into that housing, economic development. They all play a role. But just the stigma that uh, we've become the town with the $400 rent and the heroin highway is enough to drive anybody crazy if they live in the town. We need to address that now. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question is according to a report by the Virginia Tourism Corporation, which visitors contributed $2.8 million in tax receipts in our community in 2017. There's a tremendous amount of tourism potential in our community, especially. Oh, I'm mistaken. I'm so sorry, Mr. Oliver. Yes. <laughs> I have myself. I'm sorry. I don't. <laughs> You've been elected. Uh, What's your number one priority for your sitting on council? Well, I think that most of us up here uh, agree that economic development is uh, a must. Uh, my grand, my grandparents, uh, my my parents worked at Aptex when the Aptex plant closed down. And a lot of people started traveling down the city. Um, I think the town needs uh, representation on the EDA. Um, I think we need. We need people in there, we need at least two representatives. We need people in there that's going to fight for the town. We need more jobs here, better paying jobs in our community to keep people from having to travel around the city, keeping them away from their families. It's time, I've, I've done it, I've done it, and it's, it's harmless. And I think that's one of the main things is bringing better paying jobs here to our community. <coughs> According to a report by the Virginia Tourism Corporation, visitors contributed $2.8 million in tax receipts in our community in 2017. There's a tremendous amount of tourism potential in our community, especially considering our proximity to Shenandoah National Park. If elected, what do you think the town council should focus on to improve the visitor experience? And we'll start with Mr. Tennant. Well, one, of course, we're going to say uh, Skyline Drive here is the entrance here. Um, we need to promote that more. Because it's, it's a federal park. I worked up here for one year. It's a beautiful area up there. Um, sites are up there unbelievable. The overlooks. I mean, we need to bring that to the uh, people out, outside the county. Of course, we already got tourists from there. And right now, it's this time of year. It's October. Everybody's coming here for the uh, uh, for the leaves. And also, we got the festival leaves. I think uh, festival this weekend. And, uh, also, I would like to see uh, more more uh, more. Uh, more, more, uh, one second, I think, second. Uh, to uh, I like to see more, more advertising from us out here. And more websites put up from Rep. Right here in the county. Because I think we would work with them, we could probably get better, better tourism. We would improve that quite a Thank you, sir. Mrs. Thompson, if elected, what do you think the town should focus on to improve the visitor experience? So, being this time of year, it is fall, the leapers are here. Um, I think we should do a better job of putting them downtown when they get off of the drive and are headed back into town with uh, maybe a whole, with like uh, just some signage that shows you can go here, 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 the restaurants that we have. Um, so definitely some signage putting them downtown. Um, some other things that we could do uh, as far as tourism is making sure we're getting out there in front of the people who are down in the city, whether it is doing trade shows or whatever we have to do to get our name in the front of things. Um, and that's, that's the important thing, is getting our names out there. Um, increased web traffic helps, um, but we have to be advertising that website. Thank you so much. Mr. Morrison. Thank you. First and foremost, we need to start the engineering phase of Leech Run Parkway flyover. <coughs> we need to utilize our number one resource, which is a natural resource. We have five rivers. You know how many communities we kill from five rivers? Uh, ecotourism is booming. We have the sign that says we're the capital of Virginia for canoeing, but I don't see very many canoes. Uh, I would capitalize on the businesses that are in town that are investing in this area. 
I would have uh, interpersonal relationships with all those business owners, and I would make sure that whenever a new business comes in town, they wouldn't have to go through the monstrosity that they had to go through for years on end with the inspections and so forth. That's all I have. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carter, if elected, what do you think the town should do, focus on to improve the visitor's experience? Pure and simple. Make Front Royal a destination, not a thoroughfare. There are visitors that fly through this town every summer. I used to be located on Royal Avenue. They, the trailers would come through, but they would keep on passing through until they got to the sky. There's no attractor. There's not even a sign on the two magnificent bridges directing them to downtown. There is one to get on the other side, but the bridges themselves, they ought to be to be held, and they don't even give instruction historic downtown front court. So our concentration would be number one, signage, signage um, hotels, and tour, tourism, uh, better tourism uh, uh, management. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Holloway, your thoughts? I think that for a while right now, I think we're on the right path. Uh, Main Street, um, I, I, with the changes that we've had in the past few years, um, especially with businesses coming to Main Street, uh, it, it gives our tourists, um, visitors, more options. Uh, I know when I get on Main Street now, it's 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 lively uh, as compared to the way it was a few years ago. So I think right now we're on the right path, bringing more businesses to downtown. I know uh, during the lead change, uh, it's a lot of times it's hard to get through town. Uh, you got tourists coming in, you know, by the thousands. Um, so I think the more business we bring down into downtown, the better off we are. And I, I think we're right there. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Westby? Thank you. Since being on council, um, you get a better understanding of uh, the fine men and women who work for us here in the town. Um, I feel Felicia Hart does an amazing job for us in the area of, of tourism. And I tell you, we've, we've been, you know, we, we live in the prettiest part of, of, of our country. I've been to a lot of different places, and there's nothing prettier than where we live. Um, I think we need to concentrate more on the, on, uh, on the web and, uh, and um, trying to get... Uh, get out there for us to um, to be able to get people as far as the, the canoeing and, and the, the, you know, the festival and things like that. I think we're on the right road um, when it comes to tourism. Thank you. Our next question. Running the town council, you've been visiting with the citizens. What are the biggest concerns and how can you address those issues if elected? We'll start with you, Mrs. Thompson. Um, in my watch, the building and property maintenance code comes up uh, quite a bit. Um, and so I do, that's an important thing, obviously. We have people here who seek to make the biggest buck and do the least amount of work that they have to do on their property, and they don't care how their tenants live. That's wrong. Um, this is also another result, another thing, when we're talking about these jobs coming in, you improve someone's income, you improve where they live because they can move, they have an option, they're not stuck. Um, and that's what I'm hearing. As I'm walking around and I visit apartment buildings, things like that, I've been walked through some of these places. Um, so it's a very big thing that's gonna come up in the next couple of years and I wanna keep pushing it forward, that we put something in place where people have a method to contact, reach out, have their property inspected. If it's incorrect, if it's wrong, it gets repaired, the landlord faces a consequence. Thank you. Mr. Morrison? So, I know I'm not supposed to say that, but I've been challenged for four years to improve not only homeowners' rights, but renters' rights. So, <coughs> there is a little bit of bias when I go speak to people because I'm speaking to a, a, ter a certain populace. But, uh, first and foremost, we have to have vision, okay? And vision is cast from the top, all right? And the mayor would be the champion of this vision. Council would make sure that vision is sought through, but the community as a grassroots approach would provide that vision. And I think we don't have that actual community involvement in terms of 
what's here now, what's to come, and seeing it through. I have a lot more to say. We have a yellow light. But um, that is it. You have to look at social, economical, and environmental vision for this town to thrive. Remind me, yellow light is still 20 seconds. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Carter. <coughs> Do we take your question, please? Absolutely. While running for town council, you've been visiting with the citizens. What are their biggest concerns, and how can you address those issues, Will? Like the biggest concerns, number one, is the again crime problem, drug problem, housing, maintenance of the infrastructure here. Um, but we can't do this alone. We have two magnificent educational facilities quite close to us. You got Christian room over here, you got LFCC, we've not drawn some of the resources that could help us possibly in this fight. Now we're in a fight because we are a community and when you hurt, I hurt. So my thing is to find a solution that is practical and cost effective and implement it as soon as we possibly can. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Albany. Uh, well, I've had two uh, two of the of, uh, issues that have come up while I was going over to work. One is pedestrian safety and the other is uh, the drug bite. Uh, and I think right now town council is, uh, I know I attended a work session a while back and they are attempting to curb the pedestrian safety. Uh, it's uh, gotten pretty bad in the past few years. I know there has been several accidents, uh, even people being killed. Um, and uh, also with the drug life, uh, I myself know two families that uh, have been affected by the opioid issue, and uh, I think that's something that we should come together as a community to uh, try to solve because uh, these young people that are taking their lives, that this is our, they're our future. They're the future leaders. So I think that's something that we really must address. Um, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie? Right, yes, thank you. Um, some of the biggest concerns that I've had knocking on doors um, are, is, is economic growth for our town. Um, number two would be our dilapidated buildings that we have in our town. Um, we're working with council. We just passed the property maintenance, and um, I look forward to keep working with council to find ways to um, to get this done as, as, as fast as possible. Thank you. All right, sir. And Mr. Tennant. Yes. Uh, people, uh, but I, got, I know a lot of people in town, from my father, everything. The one thing, when I ran for town council this year, a lot. It's, it's, uh, <coughs> oh. Okay. Okay. Um, the one thing that a lot of people talk about, especially the last several years, has been the OP problem with this town. We need to get our law enforcement to back them up. Um, one thing that also we don't have a campaign to stop drug addiction in our schools anymore. You don't hear that anymore. Back when I was in high school in the 80s, we had a, we had a thing campaign called Just Say No. You don't hear that anymore, anymore, anything. Also, we need to prove tourism and parking down on Main Street. <coughs> and that the bunch of people asked about being put in a parking garage down there. Uh, also, uh, people's also taxes. So everybody talks about taxes. They don't want taxes raised. They want to leave right where it is. Uh, also, improve on some of the roads here in the county. Everybody's doing a pretty good job. And but the one thing everybody's talked about also do that, that the town town has done very good is that they really worked in the county the last several years. They really liked how things are going. They like to see more improvements there than it's possible. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Our next question, there are some who feel that front oil is not always business friendly. <coughs> if elected, what do you feel you can do to change this perception? And this time we'll talk with Mr. Morrison. Full disclosure, I changed it. What I mean by that is, once again, <coughs> this is a community. That's why we're running a nonpartisan race. It is a community. Every single person has a voice and have to be represented as a body from council. So with that being said, uh, you have to go and speak to these businesses, but when you're done speaking, you have to take action. The action would absolutely, once again, be in a community effort. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Are your thoughts? 
appreciate the discussion, but we're just doing to our guy. All right, sir. There are some who feel that front oil is not always business friendly. If elected, what do you feel you can do to change that perception? There are several regulations that prohibit business owners, and I happen to be one, that are very prohibited. Uh, they're not business friendly. They do not induce uh, the ability to look at the town and, and assimilate with this town to make business work. Businesses that are working have found the right model. It works. There are numerous models that will work in the town of Front Royal. We have not yet fully surveyed them, we have not fully implemented them, and I think that's a partnership between the community, the business owners, the law enforcement community, as well as government. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Holloway, your thoughts? Well, I think that's uh, an issue really for the EDA. I think that with the town having representation, if we have representation on the EDA, I, I think that uh, that would improve. Um, I, it's, it's been said a long time that the front row is business, business friendly, but I can tell you right now that uh, yeah, I, I think we are. I, I just think it takes a little bit more effort uh, from the EDA uh, to bring it, bring it to our community. Um, you know, not so much outside of the, you know, the town and the county, but we need jobs right here in town. So uh, I think it would be up to them with representation from the town. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie? I think the number one thing would be to help cut your bureaucracy to help uh, bring these businesses to us. Like I said, we live in the most prettiest part of our country. And, you know, there's a lot of businesses out there who would love to come to Front Royal and then make it their own. Thank you. All right. The question is, there are some who feel that Front Royal is not always business friendly. If elected, Mr. Tennant, what do you feel you can do to change that perception? Did I just get that question? That sounds like the same question. I haven't answered it yet. Okay. <laughs> is it my turn? Yeah, it's your turn. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, in talking to several business owners, there are things that go on that are not business friendly. There are delays in getting things open because of various inspections and things that just, I don't know, are not business friendly. You can't get your doors open as fast as you want to. We also have, if you need the, the water sewer hookups, you're looking at $15,000, $20,000, more, it, actually more than that uh, for business. Um, so we have a lot of things that prohibit it, um, make it harder. Um, we also have issues with not allowing people to do what they want with their own property. If you pay for your property and you want to run a business that is completely legal, why are, why are we getting involved in any of that? Um, we're not helping the business. Um, the idea is to get people to visit these businesses, spend money, generate income, generate tax revenue. We're not doing that if we're prohibiting businesses, if we're making it slow, if we're making it hard for them, we're deterring business. Why do we want to do that? We don't want these empty buildings on Main Street that we currently have. Let's make it a friendly place for businesses so we can get them to come in here. Thank you so much. Our next question, we'll start with Mr. Carter. The question is, Front Royal and Warren County need to work together on many projects. How do you feel you can build a good working relationship with the Warren County Board of Supervisors, or do you feel the relationship is fine as it is? I think that's an excellent question, which, which really opens the door for extreme cooperation between the two entities. Front Royal can work well off of the benefits that are derived from the county, such as purchasing. They buy a truck, they get the best price. Why can't we buy the truck at the same price? We do the administrative task. We have those people in the administration that have already done the surveys, already done the work. Why can't we piggyback? A part of this is how do we operate in a cost-effective manner to the point where we can now reap the benefits of that cost effectiveness. A lot of that is done through the GSA, which the county does take advantage of, I'm sure. The town may not necessarily do that, but we could certainly benefit from it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Holloway? Read your question for me, please. Sure. Front Royal Warren County needs to work together on many projects. How do you feel you can build a good relationship with the Warren County Board of Supervisors, or do you feel the relationship is fine as it is? 
Well, uh, I mean, it keeps going back to economic development. Um, and I, I, I say this, and I'll, I'll keep saying this, I think that uh, we need to work together with the county. I know the county funds the EDA. I know we need to work along with the county to help bring in more businesses, more jobs to our community. Not only that, uh, the drug issue here in our community, it's not only a uh, town, it's a county, it's a community problem. And I think that working together with the county would help uh, with those issues. And I, and I think we're on the right path. I know the, the relationship with the county uh, when I was on council before wasn't uh, uh, the best, but uh, I think it's improved over the past few years. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie. Yes, like Mr. Holloway was saying a few years ago, you know, the uh, relationship between the town and the county wasn't the greatest. But uh, I think now, going forward, we have a great working relationship with Warren County. And uh, I think we all have the same goals in mind um, to better our community. And I look forward to working with the county as much as I can to be able to continue in that relationship. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Uh, one thing, we, one thing that has, like, has been discussed here, that the town and the county has improved the relations in the last few years. I believe there are getting more things accomplished. Um, I like to see, uh, well, maybe more, uh, more. I uh, like to see more, uh, more press than anything else. Make people think that, that, that people know what's going on. Uh, so. All right. The question, Mrs. Thompson, is: Frontwell and Warren County need to work together on many projects. How do you feel you can build a good working relationship with the Warren County Board of Supervisors, or do you feel the relationship is fine as it is? Um, you build relationships between government entities the same way you do anybody else. You yeah, come together, you sit down, you have discussions about the issues, what's going on, and you have a back and forth. Um, governments are working together, work, we get things done, um, and that's the important part. Um, I think that's all I have. I mean, we have to work together and get things done. Um, we're slowing down processes when it's going through, I don't know, EDA and then town council, and then this place, that place. At the end of the day, we've wasted six months. Um, so coming together and hashing things out earlier, I think, is key. Thank you. And Mr. Morris. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go from memory here on the question, but it sounds like it boils down essentially to collaboration. You're talking about one entity versus an, another entity, which ultimately are people. So when you have a high turnover with elections every two years and new bodies coming in, new vision coming in, new chemistry coming in, you have to have a long-term vision. You just have to. We have to have a long-term vision, and then that will allow for the, the collaboration because if I come in, well, I don't need to walk you through it, hold hands here. But that's the answer. I'm not here to provide lip service. It's collaboration, long-term vision, and ultimately working with one another. Just being, just being honest. All right, thank you very much. Next question, we'll start with Mr. Holloway. In respect to downtown parking, do you think there's a real parking problem? And if so, how do you think you how to address it? Wow. Uh, um, you know, it, I could say yes, there is a park, uh, an issue with parking downtown, and I could say no. Um, uh, business owners would say otherwise. Um, right now, I, I have been downtown um, on a Saturday night, um, and there's absolutely no parking at all, and um, there are times that there's parking galore. Um, I know that. Uh, people have talked about a parking garage. Well, how will it be funded? You know, that's the thing. The, the money's always the issue. So, um, I think that, you know, in time, you know, a parking garage would serve best for the community. But, uh, the issue would be to fund it. Um, um, so, right now, I think we would just have to uh, let it ride the way it is. So. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie? Uh, yeah. Parking garage is kind of my thing. Uh, we do have a terrible problem downtown parking. And uh, I would like to at some point in the very near, near future have the town and county come to an agreement with, uh, with putting a garage downtown. Um, 
be used for the court system, it can be used for the town government center, and also it will alleviate a lot of this problem that we have downtown as far as uh, getting places to park so people can come downtown and shop. And thank you, that's all I have. <coughs> all right, sir. Mr. Tech? Um, well, I, well, people, one of the things that people I got, well, I got my signature this year was the downtown parking. Uh, I've heard so many suggestions to use another parking lot for other areas, having some kind of a uh, main street corner bus, maybe move some people there. I've had people suggest that to me. I've also had to, uh, they like the parking garage, how we get the money funded. Um, a lot of people say, why can't we go to the state and federal governments so they can help us give us a grant? Because we got uh, we got a lot of businesses in that town and not much parking, and I understand that. But that, that's one suggestion some of the people have asked me to suggest to the council or the council to bring it to the council. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Thompson, the question is in respect to downtown parking, do you think there's a real parking problem? And if so, how do you think the town should address it? Um, parking is different on different days, different times. Do I pull up downtown and get front door service every time? No, not at all. And then I circle the block and I find my spot. Um, in regards to a parking garage, we have to ask the people, would you want us to, uh, how do you want us to fund this? Uh, do you want a tax increase for a parking garage? I don't know if that sounds shiny and fun, I have no idea. But um, I think the parking situation, like I said, is different. Nighttime, um, evenings, around dinner time, it gets a little bit dizzy with the restaurants downtown. Um, during the day, it's this busier with offices <coughs> kind of deal. Um, I'm usually able to find parking in the gazebo lot. Um, so I don't think it's a <coughs> huge, major, major problem. Thank you. Mr. Morris. I'll tell you right now, we're not going to have a parking garage within five years. This is all I worked upon when I was a planning commissioner for three years. We talked about parking, parking, parking. I think we have a well, infrastructure. Uh, <coughs> do the best I can in a minute. The town wasn't designed for the amount of people it has. So the buildings, the placement of buildings and so forth don't allow for adequate parking. Now we can, however, purchase land and start working on future developments in terms of parking. But uh, in terms of a parking garage, it, you're talking 100 to $200 million for it, and we don't have the money. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carter, respect to downtown parking, do you think there's a real parking problem? And if so, how do you think the town should address it? Yes, there is a problem. And the problem is simply that Front Oil, as a business community, as a residential community, is evolving. We need to keep up. We have not tried to keep up until we have issues from specific tenants with their problems, and they are correct. There needs to be a solution. The solution is if we're going to grow, smart growth, we're also going to need to grow our parking. We're also going to need to grow our downtown sector to accommodate the businesses that come. Remember, we're trying to be business friendly. We can't be business friendly if you ain't got enough pocket space. <coughs> Bottom line. So, the evolution of the town's uh, solution to this problem needs to be done sooner rather than later. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question, we'll start with you, Mr. Gillespie. There are many revitalization efforts happening in and around downtown Front Royal. However, many derelict properties remain in the town of Front Royal. Is this an important issue to you? And if so, what ideas do you have to deal with the issue? Uh, yes. Um, now, revitalization is very important to me. Uh, you know, we uh, here we just recently got a grant from the state uh, for uh, about three quarters of a million dollars, which you know we're putting it to use uh, for facade improvements downtown and some signage and and things of that nature. Um, of course, derelict buildings are a big problem in our town. And that was why we had passed the, uh, the property maintenance uh, code here as recently as last Tuesday. So um, I would just, again, I would just like to keep working towards that goal is to be able to, to clean up some of these buildings in our town. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tennant? Um, could you repeat the question? Sure. There are many revitalization efforts happening in and around downtown Front Royal. However, many derelict properties remain in the town of Front Royal. Is this an important issue to you? And if so, what ideas do you have to deal with the issue? Um, first, we need to contact the property owners 
and we can give it to them. Because they're being because they own the buildings, they we gotta get them to clean it up. Uh, the other thing is it's mainly uh, uh, a lot of people here in town that own properties don't live here in town. So they really don't hear what crap, you know, what, what goes on. So I think maybe we should get more more emphasis into that. And because uh, I've had a lot of people tell me that over the years. That's just what goes on. A lot of people don't care about the properties they have here in town. So they can, that's what I all right, Mrs. Thompson, your thoughts? Uh, derelict properties is a huge problem. It's also causing problems for other businesses, um, as well as uh, people who are tenants next to them or you know own property next to them. Um, the way that we get rid of these is to have consequences behind it. You get a fine, you tear it down. I don't care what you do with it, but you fix it. You fix the problem. Um, we talk about um, drugs, and I'm not going to go into this, but we had like three overdoses this past week. It happens here. Um, and some of these properties <coughs> become little havens for activity like that. And we start cleaning it up, we're going to start seeing lots of changes around here, not just with buildings, but with people. Thank you. Mr. Morrison, there are many revitalization efforts happening in and around downtown Front Royal. However many derelict properties remain in the town, is this an important issue to you? And if so, what ideas do you have to deal with the issue? If you could ask me one question, that's the one question I want you to ask. Because for five years, this is all I've been trying to do. We have one more vote, I believe it's on the 21st or so forth, that will make the, um, basically the state code for property maintenance an ordinance. Um, it's taken a long time to get to that point. So you ask me what would I do? Well, first I'll, I'll pass, I'll cast my vote to pass that ordinance, and then we're going to enforce that ordinance. If a property is derelict, or if a homeowner, slumlord, whoever, however you want to choose to uh, phrase those people, frame those people, phrase those people, then you're going to do a cease and desist, and they're going to comply because when you're a renter, you're paying for a service, and that service should be provided adequate housing. When you're a homeowner, your home should be protected. It shouldn't be property value taken down because people won't be responsible and take some initiative. The town has to do what they have to do to protect the citizens, and it's council's responsibility. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Carter, your thoughts? Yes, my thought is that we do need the property maintenance code. I am a little miffed because <coughs> I hear people say we don't have the funds to pay for this, the enforcement. <coughs> Uh, I think I've done my homework. I've gone through your budget, your 18, 19 budget, and in the first 20 pages I've identified over $200,000 of roaming money that we could put our hands on to pay that code enforcer or that inspector. Uh, how we missed that, I don't know. But I have been a manager of a multi-million dollar budget, and I know there's fluff in every budget. We need to put it to good use, and if we are going to follow through with the property maintenance code, we need a qualified inspector going out there doing that because the town will show some liability if that property owner raises an issue and we have to defend ourselves. We're going to need the money. So I'm saying we've got the we've got the means. Let's get it done. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Holloway. I think the uh, maintenance code is uh, I think it's a great thing. I, I, I look forward to them passing it. Um, I think the, one of the first things we need to do is hold the property owner accountable. Um, there are some really run down places here in our town and they've been sitting there for years and years and years. People have talked about it, we've talked about it, we talked about it when I was on the council back in 2008 and they're still there, nothing's been done to them. And I think we need to hold those property owners accountable, um, make them pay, make them pay. Um, not if we have to go in and take the property, seize the property, tear it down, do whatever, hold them accountable for the cost. That's what we need to do. Thank you. Thank you. Before our next question, I'll make sure that you all have your microphones turned on so everyone can hear you in the, in the council's chambers here. But the next question, and we will start with you, Mr. Tennant, is there are many special events and festivals held in downtown Front Royal. What pros and cons do you see coming from these events? And do you feel there should be a limit to the number of events being held? Uh, no, I think I like to see more here. Uh, uh, well, I Sorry about that. Uh, I like to see more festivals here in town. I remember when the Irish festival was here, 
that we don't see that anymore. I can see a couple more festivals, like just that's just for example. Um, but this is the Main Street, having the best days of the year. We had the festivals here, and uh, more power festivals, more 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 support the best for the town. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Thompson. All right, so let's not be around the bush and make it cryptic. This is about family fun day. Um, I, it, it, it's an ordinance issue. Mr. Sela brought that to everybody's attention at the meeting, and we have so many events allotted, and we had exceeded them um, based on what is currently in our ordinance. So family fun day came. Um, it was a great draw to business. Um, my husband's business is on Main Street. They participated. They did a crab roll. It was a great time. I had never, I hadn't seen that many people down on Main Street on Mother's Day in a long time, or any like random spring day. Um, and I, so I, I'm in support of adding an additional day. We've seen the results from this. This isn't um, something new. We're not asking for a brand new one. We've seen what this festival does for the community. So I agree with it. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. There are many special events and festivals held in downtown Front Royal. What pros and cons do you see coming from these events? And do you feel there should be a limit to the number of events being held? To answer your question directly, the, the pros obviously are the, the increase of the influx of people to our town. Now, if we are prepared for that influx, it'll, it'll go off without a hitch. If we're not prepared for that influx, it's going to be disastrous. So once again, it's about policy implementation and coordination of those, of those events. I need the second part, please. The second part is, do you feel that there should be a limit to the number of events being held? You know, I don't, I don't think there's one size fits all on this one. I don't think I can give you an answer. And, and it's just, uh, the thing is, yes, I think, I think there's a pro. But you're really not going to know until you get involved. And um, it's a little bit of trial and error involved on this one, quite honestly. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carter? Yes, I think that there are pros and cons to the number of events, number of events that take place downtown. But if you were really to query the business owners, I don't think it's so disruptive in, in a uh, time span of a year that they don't enjoy the benefits of the people that are drawn to Front Royal. Those people drive the economic development. They drive the businesses. I don't care how nice your business is. If you're not selling, you're out of business. So unless you've got people, and you can keep those lights on and keep those people in this town, that's the only way we're going to really make this thing fruitful. The only con that I see to that would be some business that's directly affected by location. Other than that, I think that the town is right for that, and I think we need to do some real good planning and some good execution. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Mr. Hallway, the question is, there are many special events and festivals being held in downtown Front Royal. What pros and cons do you see coming from these events, and do you feel that there should be a limit to the number of events being held? Well, the pros are, I feel like, uh, uh, bringing, bringing people to downtown. Uh, especially, I, to me, I think the businesses benefit from it. Um, I know Family Fun Day, uh, everybody that I've talked to, they've been on the best parade that the town has all year. Um, and it's a fun-filled event. Um, now, you know, the comments, <coughs> Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I was uh, attended uh, a work session, I believe the council discussed about the cost of a permit. Uh, I believe it's like $25. Um, and they were talking about, uh, you know, they have uh, police, uh, they have cleanup crews, uh, the cost to put on these festivals. Um, so, but, you know, as for a limit on the number of festivals, I, I think it's a great thing for the town. I just wish that uh, we didn't have the issue with the cost associated with the festivals. Um, Thanks, sir. I'm sorry. Thanks. Sorry. And Mr. Gillespie. Yeah, I would not want to limit any of the events downtown. You know, it brings people to our town. Um, it brings our residents downtown where we get to talk and see each other. And, you know, um, as far as the cons goes, you know, there is the parking. Um, but that being said, there, there, there's more pros than, than by far any time when it comes to bringing people downtown. So that's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, Mrs. Thompson's coming to you first. 
What do you feel are the two single most important infrastructure issues facing the town? So, curb and gutter is a huge one. I was sitting my neighbor, the cul-de-sac of Jamestown Road. Um, we could really use curb and gutter up there. It's like a little pond. Um, so, I think curb and gutter and um, improving our streets. There are so many where we have extreme, like, potholes. Um, I busted a tire on one. Uh, so, concentrating on things like that, our streets, our sidewalks, and of course, um, we're looking at this system out there for pedestrian safety on Shenandoah Avenue. Okay, thank you. Mr. Morrison? You want me to pick two? It's going to be roads and sewer system. Mr. Carter, what do you feel are the two single most important infrastructure issues facing the town? Number one, your water is a big problem. Uh, flooding, raining, hurricane season, in the winter, the snow, the ice melt. The, the sewer system is not handling it. That's a part of our infrastructure that needs to be accommodated. The influx of people downtown, the businesses downtown, they all need to be upgraded and brought around to the new standard. Again, this town is evolving. We need to evolve with the town. The infrastructure is a big part of that. If we can't support our business people and our residents, then we're really not offering support at all. So that is a very important issue as far as that goes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Holloway. I would say our roads and storm sewer system. I know uh, we have heavy rains. You go down to uh, North Royal Avenue and you're, you're like going through the river. Um, it just, it's, it's horrible. So I, that's my, my two right now, roads and storm sewers. All right, Mr. Gillespie? Uh, streets and sidewalks. Uh, many places in our town, our roads are coming apart. And we need to find ways to be able to pay for, for infrastructure improvements. Um, the storm system issue, um, it, it's lower down in a lot of those places in our town than, than what, the, um, what the storm sewers will be able to allow to carry away. So that's why we have um, the ponding of water down on you know, north of the world and down towards the wind, you know, the Wendy's area. So I just wanted to let you know, there's not a whole lot we can really do, do too much about that. So thank you. All right, and finally, Mr. Tennant, what do you feel are the two single most important infrastructure issues facing the town? Oh, clearly as everybody else said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> well, I got my signatures this year, of course, that was some of the things people talked about was the curb, curb and gutter and sewer system. Um, I took pictures of uh, the main incident where that one Sunday I was at Tony Pine with my dad having lunch, I mean, duck breakfast, where power went out and the water was flooded. I had to help my dad to the car. Up, up by steps there, the water was almost six inches deep right there in the steps. I mean, that area needs to be fixed up. Um, I've also had other people tell me about the uh, uh, 55 or PJ's pressure it is. Uh, I had several videos. That people sent me on Facebook when that uh, when we had that rain on Sunday. The water was almost this deep going down through the middle of the road. Uh, also, one other thing that uh, one friend that met gentleman down on 14th Street. There's a townhouse or two yards, two hills, coming to the band out there. All right, well, I went down there when we had it, uh, that incident on that Sunday back in uh, May when we had that heavy rain. Uh, I went down there and uh, there was about this much deep in the backyard. Thank you. There's a lot of kids that played in that year. Thank you. Yes. Next question, we'll start with Mr. Morrison. Uh, what do you feel are the biggest public safety issues facing the town at this time? Forgive me if you don't like my answer. But one of the biggest safety issues is the Delaret and blighted properties that people are living in third world conditions and paying not third world price. Uh, these hotels, not going to title them, not going to go down that road on this platform, but you know what they are. Unacceptable. Uh, thirdly, the, uh, <coughs> thirdly, the, the traffic pattern in the town, pedestrians getting hit, uh, pretty, the writing's on a wall, it's unacceptable. That's what I have. All right, sir. thank you. Mr. Carter, your thoughts? 
my thoughts are that if we're back to evolution, we haven't kept up with the town growth. Uh, we haven't followed through on a lot of regulatory uh, issues that concern infrastructure, that concern pedestrian safety. There's a lot of issues here that all come into play. I think that if we're wise, we put together a panel, we work it out, we get the solution, keeping the business community in the forefront because it's about building them so they can help build us. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Holloway, what do you think are the two or the biggest public safety issues facing the town right now? I think the main thing is, I think the main issue is pedestrian safety. Um, not only uh, are more crosswalks needed, but we need to enforce that. Um, I live in an area where there are several crosswalks, and I've rarely ever seen anyone using it. Um, they tend to cross other areas beside the crosswalks, and there's also uh, cars that travel down the road that will not stop for pedestrians at crosswalks. So I think that we need to start enforcing that. Um, the other issue, I, I agree with Mr. Morrison, is the light of buildings. Um, you know, uh, not only that, but you got uh, the properties that, you know, your renters, um, the buildings are in bad shape. Um, they need to be taken care of. They won't do it. It's just, it's, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Mr. Dusty, your thoughts? Yeah, the, the two uh, biggest public safety issues. Um, one, you know, my good friend Mr. Seelock has been, been spearheading this, is, is pedestrian safety. Um, we've done a lot of uh, good work so far as far as um, helping, helping in this area, <coughs> and it's still a work in progress. Um, number two would be the blighted buildings in our town, and uh, I look forward to working with council on helping alleviate these problems. Thanks. Thanks, sir. Mr. Tennant, what do you feel are the biggest public safety issues facing the town? Um, I would say the opening problem. Uh, I've had a lot of talk to police officers over the last several years, talking about how bad it's gotten, especially in our hotels, where people open a plan out for a week and they stay there and get do their business there. Uh, also, like the uh, uh, traffic safety of walking, the people being very more careful, maybe talk to some of these kids more in the schools about crossing the streets and doing a better job. And uh, that's about it. All right. And Mrs. Thompson? Um, I feel like a songbird or something. But uh, pedestrian safety is huge. Um, even bigger, in my opinion, is the property maintenance, the rental situation. Because <coughs> Of course, those buildings, the people in them, again, this is whole life. So this involves the opioid epidemic that we have um, that we can't hide at this point. It's everywhere, every day. Um, it affects the, the kids going to school. I, it's a full life thing that's not being dealt with, and it's it's huge. And I think that this ordinance, when, it has, when it's official, official, um, is going to do a lot of good for everyone in the town, from business owners to the general people, I guess. <coughs> All right, thank you so much. Next question will be coming from our audience this evening, and we will start with Mr. Carter. So what steps will you take to control spending, and will you look for an audit of all departments? <coughs> Accountability is probably my, my uh, strongest word. We have managers that manage different areas of this town and they have budgets that they've been given and proposed and otherwise going forward, but how do you manage that? Unless we become good stewards of the people's money and we spending it like it's our own money. I've heard people say you don't spend what you don't have. So you know you just don't add a couple of bucks to your budget because if I don't get it now, I, I won't get it. But that's the budget thinking. That's the government type of thinking. <coughs> we need to be more community in our thinking and understand that what are we doing for the good of the people, first and foremost. And if we can keep that in mind as we look at the budget and not as we implement the budget, we got a lot of maintenance issues. We got a lot of issues with our, our town operation. And 
<laughs> kills me to see that, but thank you. That's a far level. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Mr. Holloway, uh, what steps will you take to control spending, and will you look for an audit of all departments? Well, I think I, I think that's an annual thing, audit of all departments. Uh, and uh, town spending, I, I say if you don't have it, don't spend it. You can't spend it. Um, if you don't know where you want to get it, and if you don't have it, you can't spend it. And I think that's the main thing right now. I think the, I don't even think the police department, the $11 million police department, I don't think that's fully funded yet. I know they're talking about doing other things, uh, where they want to get the money. And I think that's a question that the council right now is looking at, where we're going to get the money. And when I was on council back in 2008, I, I voted against uh, tax increases, and I'm not about to do that now. And so my, I'm just curious where they want to get the money to do what they, they want to do now. And uh, so, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Leslie? <coughs> what to do to help control spending? Uh, you know, I think every department needs to look at all, you know, different ways to be able to cut back. Um, we should always look for ways to save money on our taxpayers. Um, All right, sir. Mr. Tennant? Yeah, three, three questions. Yeah. Sure. What steps will you take to control spending, and will you look for an audit of all the markets? Well, we always got to do an audit of all the markets. <laughs> We can always got to do an audit of all departments every year. I think what I've seen in the last 10 years at the town council means they've done that. I remember one year they even did a Blue Ridge panel to see how they could save money. And, uh, and a friend of mine did that. And he says, he called me up before he came to the council that night, the next day. He says, Robbie, I did everything I could. I didn't realize how much I could do. The council's done everything possible. <coughs> so uh, I like to see uh, that's good. All right, sir. Mrs. Thompson. Um, I'm a big pro proponent of fiscal responsibility. Um, I've noticed that the council gets hit with a lot of unexpected kind of expenses. They come up, and I think it needs to be made harder to do that. You, you get a no at some point. Um, so that we're not going into debt for things that aren't an emergency. Of course, if an emergency comes up, that's different. You have to handle that. But if it's something that's not an emergency and it was not planned for, then we can't do it. It's just, it is, it is what it is. You can't, you should not spend money you don't have. It's called going into debt. We don't need a deficit in the town of Front Royal. Um, and I support audits, obviously. If you have nothing to hide, you're not afraid of an audit. Mr. Uh, Mr. Morrison, what would you do? What steps would you take to control spending? And will you look for an audit of all departments? First and foremost, I'm just a conservative. I've raised taxes half a cent in the last two years as a councilman. Um, but we have to quit taking this reactive approach and start being proactive. Uh, we have to streamline <coughs> services and so forth to, to, as I like to call, trim the fat and be more efficient. The next part of that question, uh, do I support audits? Of course I do, I support audits because it's, they're not a bad thing. Um, I'm audited every year in the federal government and it helps with streamlining and being efficient. So I think it's a necessary, uh, I think it's a necessary element. Thank you, sir. Next question, we'll start with Mr. Holloway. What's your plan to further development of the old Abtex property? <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, well, I, I, th I think we go right back to the beginning. Oh, sorry. I think we go right back to the beginning. I mean, that's, that to me is a job for EDA. Um, I feel that uh, right now, with what they have going on, it's, it's a start, um, but it's been a long process, and I think that with the town and county hopefully working together, I think that we could build out there. I think that that's the future of the town. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to come. It's just going to take time. But I think that's a job for the EDA, and I think it's important for the town to have representation on the EDA board. That's the only way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Lesby, your thoughts? Again, you know, the Amtex 
site. Again, the Attex site. We need to do what we can to try and market from Royal because, you know, make no mistake about it, we need to bring manufacturing jobs to our town. And uh, it, I, I just want to work as hard as I possibly can to see that this comes to me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Tennant, what's your plan to further development the old Aptex property? Uh, work with the EDA. Um, uh, work with the EDA to try to get more businesses out there. Um, we got a lot of property out there. We probably make, I mean, I need federal it needs to be fetched up. Um, I see uh, a lot of area, a lot of businesses out there will come there and we just get the EDA to work with the town work with them. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Mrs. Thompson? Um, I agree with working along with the EDA to, to uh, market the property, to find the businesses. Um, it's a shame because we're not meeting the demographics of certain requirements that they have for like the bigger companies like Procter & Gamble or Amazon to come here. Like, that would be huge. Um, those are walking distance jobs for many people. Um, so it's definitely something that needs to be looked at and we need something to go there. It's sitting there, it's doing nothing. Um, so definitely a good place to put good paying jobs and uh, it requires the EDA and the people working together to get this done. Thank you. Mr. Morrison, what's your plan to further develop the old Aptex property? I'm not going to sit up here and tell you I have all the answers because I don't. That's why we rely on our, our working professionals to help us guide, guide us through this process. Now, listen to me. The Aptex property has been perked and ready to go for quite some time. Um, I'm not at liberty to say I, some of it is privileged as to why certain deals haven't panned out. However, that property thriving is essential for the success of this town. And it goes back to the common denominator here where we are a community, we need adequate housing. Why would you bring companies that are going to generate more people in the area without adequate housing, affordable housing, like you're dealing with Warren County, Warren County school system. Um, but I, like I said, I'm not going to come up and sit up here and give all the answers like I, as if I have them. But, but that, is, that is the reality. That is the reality. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Carter, what's your plan to further develop the old Aztec property? Warren County, uh, as a, a co-partner in this whole adventure, one of the things we, I do understand that the county has undertaken a comprehensive plan, which included Aztec. They have several options on the table. The town, in and of itself, should be willing to take a look at those plans, a serious look, as to how we market, when we market, and where we market the town of Front Royal, by virtue of using our cooperation with the County of Warren. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question of the audience this evening, we'll start with Mr. Gillespie. Front Royal has children being raised in hotel rooms. How would you work to help these families obtain affordable housing? It's never good um, when, when children are living in motels. Um, I would just, um, one, I, I pray for those children. Um, number two is, um, you know, we, we need to, to definitely find ways to be able to find these kids um, that, that are there and to be able to, to, you know, get the authorities involved as best as we can, you know, um, to see if we can find some some, some different uh, different avenues and places to live for these for these families. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Teddy, your thought? Um, I guess work with social services, uh, other departments, state departments, and see how that goes. Because right now, I know in Front Royal, well, I do understand from a lot of property owners here in town. And for a while, the realtors, you know, two years, uh, so two years ago. But everybody, everybody, everybody every apartment, everything down is pretty much been stacked up. So maybe, maybe some service might know about more people, and we need to refer it to them. All right. Mrs. Thompson, for all has children being raised in motel rooms. How would you work to help these families obtain affordable housing? All right. So let's start with some basics. First off, it's not illegal for a parent to have to, to stay in a hotel with their kids. It's not illegal. It's always a last resort for these uh, 
for these people who have to do this. Uh, this ties into all the volunteer work and stuff that I do. Um, I'm currently um, working on a program with Pathways where the families will get a mentor, and I'm going to be one of those mentors where we meet for a couple of hours and we discuss the mind shift that has to happen. How do you save money to get out of this situation? Because they're actually spending more for hotel room than they would in actual rent. They just can't necessarily get in because maybe their credit is bad or uh, things of that nature. So we have to, to get to the root cause of the issue, which is, um, in many cases, it's just not being able to afford something. It is, you know, um, it just some overall things. And yes, the opioid epidemic plays into that. There's drug problems. But a lot of this is not something where a police officers are going to come in and take a kid because they live in a hotel. That's wrong. Thank you. Mr. Morrison? I want to understand the context of the question. It's not about right or wrong, correct? It's just asking how would you help these families obtain affordable housing? I can do that. Um, here we are again. We're dealing with the same issue again. We need affordable, adequate housing, whether it's new housing or revitalization of uh, current homes. You know, I'd like to see these older homes revitalized. I mean, that is the backbone of Front Royal. You don't come to Front Royal, uh, I won't go there. You, you don't come to Front Royal and not get some of that old charm. These houses need to be revitalized. We have, it's, it's done become a pandemic. You're not gonna, you're not gonna solve the problem overnight. That's why I've been fighting for five years to, to what we're now talking about, a majority of these questions. Um, so, in, in, in uh, wrapping up, I would say get to work. Let's get going. It's long overdue. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carter, Front Row has children being raised in motel rooms, and how would you work to help these families obtain affordable housing? I understand there are more jurisdictions around us with housing available on a, an emergency, <coughs> temporary basis. Our own agencies should be coordinating the ability of those jurisdictions to pick up our overflow, to get those kids out of there. At the same time, we should have members of our management team researching and searching where we can find housing, even on a temporary <coughs> basis, six to 12 months to get them out of the hotel and get them away from that scenario and into <coughs> a more fixed home environment. So that's my answer. Uh, the other way would be just to build new houses, and of course that's the front row. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Holloway, your thoughts? Well, get them out of the, the motels. I, I know as long as they're cared for, um, I know it's not wrong, but, and I agree with Ms. Thompson, the issue, the big issue is most of the time is that they have bad credit. Um, uh, they're not able to afford um, the deposit or whatever, or an apartment or a house. Um, so that's a big issue. So I, I really think we need to work with social services, try to get these families out of the motels and into affordable housing. And you know, if, if it's a job-related issue, um, help them help them locate work, um, and that's, that's something that we need to do. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question. We'll start with you, Mr. Tennant. The question is: Do you feel the town employees are paid competitive wages? If not, what steps would you take to correct the issue? Okay, uh, I know it's been an ongoing problem in town for the last ten years. I know some of the police officers have been. Uh, come here, they stay here about a year or two, and they go off someplace else. Um, that's, that's one, I know some of the employees, uh, some of them have to me that they said that, the, that the, they're not getting paid enough, and that's they, why they, they go to uh, Loudoun County. Um, right now, bottom line is the uh, town may have to sit down and work together, and just see how we can work this problem out. Because I know a lot of town employees have left here and gone someplace else. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Thompson, your thoughts? All right, so I want to make sure I understand the question. Are we talking about people who work for the town specifically or people who are employed in town? It says the town employees. Okay. Um, from what I've seen looking over the budget, it looks, looks like competitive. Um, I think there could, could be some slight increases there, to be honest. Um, it's the same with the teachers, same thing. 
Thank you. Mr. Morrison? To be honest with you, I don't know what the question is. The question is, do you feel the town employees are paid competitive wages? Oh, I got it. Can you? Um, sorry. I got the thing kicking off here. Um, no. No, we've been working on this for, for two years now. Uh, our employees need to get paid more. They need to have they need to have comparable salaries to the surrounding areas. Bottom line, and we have and it's our job as council to and, and the town manager to find it in the budget or however to make sure that those employees get what they deserve. Because if we don't have if we don't have competitive wages, how in the world are we going to continue to have retention? They're going to go to rapid handing and so forth, and that's what's happening. Thank you. Mr. Carter, do you feel the town employees are paid competitive wages? And if not, what steps would you take to correct the issue? I know they're not paid competitive wages. <clears throat> um, again, I believe in good management governance of our budgets to the point that we need to be able to include a raise, not a big raise, but an incremental raise that's commensurate with the amount of revenue this town drink brings in. And that, that goes full circle. If my business is not doing good, my tax base is not doing good, I can't give them the money. So if we can make it so that our businesses give us the revenue and our residences produce the revenue, at which point we could afford a raise. Now, now I won't be going to that, but that's primarily my answer. Thank you, sir. All right, so thank you. Mr. Holloway, your thoughts? This has been an issue for several years. Um, I, I know there are uh, employees that work in the public works department that qualify. I know they qualify, I don't know if they still do, um, for welfare. Um, it's sad. Um, and I know that uh, we're not competitive. So, um, you know, we need, and Mr. Carter was saying that, uh, you know, if we could bring in more revenue to the town and hopefully afford to give these individuals, uh, our employees, uh, the salary they deserve, um, I think it's a must. Um, I mean, we can go in a budget and hopefully find, find a few dollars, but uh, it's, it's sad because <coughs> I'm pretty sure that uh, one of the biggest um, turnovers is in the public works department, and there are some of the hardest working individuals out there. All right, sir. And Mr. Lesby, your thoughts? Yeah, the town of Front Row um, last year did a compensation study for all of our employees, and it's true, some eight, ten thousand dollars a year. That just judging by other communities, you know, um, that are comparable to ours. And um, it's unacceptable. I mean, these are our neighbors, you know. Um, these guys get up on that telephone pole you know, on Thanksgiving dinner when the, when the transformer blows. Um, they're down standing in that ditch, 20 degrees outside, standing in water up to their head. They need to make a competitive wage. And um, they have my full support in going forward with it. It was uh, a three-year plan. We're on phase on, on the first year. The next budget cycle will be phase two. And I work to do everything I can to see that that gets implemented. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our next question, Mrs. Thompson, we'll start with you. And this could be a uh, juicy one. How do you feel about the level of taxes that the citizens of Front Row are being assessed? <laughs> All right, can you that again? <laughs> How do you feel about the level of taxes that the citizens of Front Royal are being assessed? <clears throat> right now, um, I think where we are is fine. I don't think an increase is needed or anything like that. I am not sure what else to say on that subject. All right, Mr. Morrison? <sighs> We're talking about the town, not the county, correct? That's correct. Okay. <laughs> Let me tell you, it's a blessing to have town tax as low as we do. Like I said, we've only raised it a half a cent in two years. Um, energy rates are some of the lowest in the entire state. Um, in the military, I've traveled all over, all over the country, and I've never seen taxes as low as I have here. Uh, I truly feel like we're blessed, and I feel like we've had some, some very um, calculated, 
fortunate decisions made by our town uh, manager in years past that have projected us into this low, uh, low tax base that we're currently in. So uh, all I can say is keep it up. Thank you, sir. Mr. Carter, how do you feel about the level of taxes that the citizens of Front Royal are being assessed? As a citizen, I'm proud to have the taxes where they are. However, I do see the problem problems that are associated with that. We're talking not being able to pay employees enough, not having enough money to do the infrastructure problems we have. I'm not saying raise taxes, but I'm saying let's scrutinize what we've already done because we've got to maintain money. This is somebody else's money we're dealing with. And a lot of our people in management don't seem to get it. You know, this is my money you're spending. So I'm going to be in your face about my money. And, and this is what it comes down to. Taxes, I'm, I'm all for the good taxes. I love that, but I don't want to see them raised. And this is the home of the lowest tax rate in Virginia, just about. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Sure. Holloway. I love the tax rate. Uh, and I'm sure everyone else does too. I mean, we're a town. We pay town and county taxes. Um, if we were a city, we'd be paying a higher tax, of course. But uh, as it is right now, I know people say, hey, you know, uh, you're not comfortable with uh, other localities and stuff. But that's what that's what's makes, that is what makes for a world special. And um, I want to keep the tax rate low. Um, I think there's other ways to earn revenue. And um, I'm not for raising taxes. And Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie. Yeah, I love our tax rate, and, and we are the lowest in the state, and, and we all should be proud of that. And, uh, we, we are very blessed to, to live in Front Royal. We have um, low electric rates, you know, uh, sewer and water. You know, the town shops electricity sometimes, you know, I think three and four years out, and that's why we, uh, we, we get it that cheap a lot of times. So. Uh, I will just do wherever I can to keep it that way. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Mr. Tennant, your thoughts on the assessment of taxes? Uh, the reason why I've done over the years is that Toronto has some of the lowest tax rates. But uh, if you was for uh, the race tax in town, everybody shows up. But the bottom line is people need to understand that we've got some of the lowest rates in this town, and we should use that to use for people who want to move here. Thank you, sir. Mr. Morris, we'll start with you. This next question. There's been a rumor about passenger rail coming here. What would you do to encourage 21st century investments in our town? Let's clarify. Are you talking about the BRE? I'm just reading the question that was given by the audience. <laughs> I'm going to assume you're talking about the BRE. Uh, as a federal employee that has a five-hour commute, I would love the BRE. It better be express. <laughs> uh, they make promises. Oh, I'm talking fast. They make promises, but you have to you have to have the infrastructure ready. I know we have the rail already here, but you, you know how much how many hundreds of millions of dollars it would cost to build that station. We better have a good reason for them to build that station, which means bodies. Uh, if it is the BRE, look at the example of Haymarket when they said no, and it's the fastest growing city in all of Virginia. And it's a square mile. It's incredible, but. Um, I'm fired up, but can you, uh, man, I wanted to answer the question more thoroughly. But yeah, I'm all for the rail. I'm all for the rail. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Carter, your thoughts? I thought it is that rail transportation would enhance our business and our economic development exponentially. We got people coming in, we got people going, and they can get in quickly and they can get out quickly. That is naturally an enhancement to front line. All right. Mr. Holloway, the question is a rumor about passenger rail coming here. What would you do to encourage 21st century investments in our town? Uh, I think it would be a great thing. I mean, especially for commuters. Um, I would push for it. Um, uh, I've been told this in the conference this morning. Yes, it is. And um, it, it would be a great thing. I mean, save time and money. Uh, just, you know, like I said, for the commuters. Spend more time with their families, wearing tear on their vehicles. Um, like I said, I've done it before, and it's 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 not fun traveling up and down the road. But if you had that commuter rail here, God bless. Mr. Gillespie? Yeah, who would be against BRE? Yeah, yeah I set that traffic every day myself, and I would love to see it. But, um, 
you know, uh, costs would be one thing to look at, I guess, on this. But, uh, you know, as with everything, there's no way to win. Thank you. All right, Mr. Kennedy, your thoughts? Yes, I like to see the rail come here. Uh, it'd be great for us, to, like, like like everybody said, the commuters. Especially how much money, uh, how much someone could save if they could just, just ride a train to and from work every day instead of just get in a car and drive with paying all the gas going down, up and down the highway. I mean, I drove several times, several years down to Gainesville. I worked at Atlantic Research. That's why I paid $15 to get on the van. That was a lot better than sitting like $30, $40 a week in gas. Thank you. All right, and Mrs. Thompson. Um, I support uh, the passenger rail. Uh, I think it helps the work-life balance for the families who are already working down there. It means that parents are getting home earlier to be with these kids, so that means it's not unattended kids. And we all know, like, I don't hands, devil's playground sort of thing. Um, so I think it would be absolutely wonderful for our community. And if they can get back home before dinner, that means they can also come downtown and have dinner downtown and not on the way home or just come home and are so exhausted they just sit there. Um, so the work-life balance for the people who would utilize that is huge. I drove to Manassas and I wasn't pull my hair out for that. Thankfully now I go the opposite direction, so less problems. I'm going to Winchester, by the way. Um, but yeah, so I think it increases work-life balance and uh, keeps our families doing family-related things. Thank you, Mr. Carter. Question for you. Now that we have a community block grant, how specifically do you feel that that money should be used? Primarily to, in, to enhance the uh, infrastructure in terms of sidewalk, curbs, gutters. Um, and the community block grant, as I understand it, is something that it's almost a one-time gift we take it. But I've always believed that grants scare me because you pay for a grant in the long run. But the town could use that extra money to enhance its own infrastructure in terms of curbs, gutters, aprons to businesses. And in some cases, we need to do some, some enhancements to the <coughs> business facades that we have problems with. Use that money that way. So it's just, it, yeah, it's a good thing. All right. Sir. Mr. Holloway, your thoughts on that? I agree. I think the, uh, the block rain would be great uh, for the sides, especially uh, Main Street. Um, uh, not only that, but uh, roads, uh, the infrastructure, uh, storm sewers, uh, curb gutter, everything. I mean, it's, you go to downtown now and you'll see 100 feet of curb and gutter, you won't see anything. You'll go a few more feet and you'll see curb and gutter. I think it's uh, being well spent money. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie? Uh, yes, the community block grant for, for downtown revitalization is very important to our community. Um, there are plans in the, in the uh, works for restrooms uh, downtown, uh, building facades for our businesses, and uh, there has been talk of even uh, eventually a pavilion being put downtown. Um, I love spending time down to visit and anything that will help uh, bring people downtown to visit to help our businesses out is always is always a, a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tennant, now that we have the community block grant, how specifically do you feel that money should be used? Well, pretty much everybody said it here tonight. It's pretty much everything what the town needs. The curb and gutter, sewer systems, maybe fix some of the air flood plain areas and everything for a while. And uh, they would place, maybe place the bridge down there where we cross the stadium. That would be a good idea. Just to put it out there. Thank you. All right. Mrs. Thompson? The community block grant, I think, is um, excellent to improve the look and feel of our downtown. Um, Restrooms downtown would be amazing. I think that's a great idea. And a splash pad. I really like the splash pad. Um, <laughs> But uh, I think these are all things that, we, that, are, that are good for us. Anything that we can do that attracts people to come downtown is, is what we should do with that money, whatever that is. What did you say? Someone said something. I don't know what they said. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Morrison, now that we have the community block grant, how specifically do you feel that that money should be used? Keyword specific. I believe that block grant is for $750,000. I was on planning on Jeremy, Jeremy Camp. Uh, 
you know, drafted up the, the proposal for that grant. When Felicia Hart told us, the council, that we were receiving the block grant, we were beside ourselves. But like you said, you have to figure out a way to actually uh, delegate the funds. Uh, first and foremost, streetscape on Jackson Street update through this grant would be, would be phenomenal. Uh, in, the, in the proposal, it was mainly targeted towards the facade. Okay, so we're, one, we're two of one on the facade. I think what, we, what we're looking at here is when a, when a business wants to open up in Front Royal, they have to go through so much red tape to get that business to suit the needs of their business. I think the facade or, or the, the money in the block grant should help with implementing new businesses because a lot of them are spending a ton of money in their own leasing <coughs> building. Gotcha. Thank you. Business growth. Thank you. Thank you. Final question for this evening, we'll start with you, Mr. Holloway. The Chamber of Commerce, the FRIBA, the EDA, just a few of the key organizations and agencies here in town. Can you share with us what your involvement and communication with these agencies has been? And if elected, how do you feel you can work with these organizations for the betterment of Front Royal? I will ask it again. All right, bring it down. Can you repeat that question? Sure. Uh, <laughs> um, with my involvement, um, uh, basically when I was on uh, council previously, um, I know the council worked closely with the EDA um, at the time. Um, uh, we've always uh, worked with the chamber. Um, and, you know, if, uh, if I am fortunate enough to be elected, um, I will continue to do so in that capacity and um, hopefully do what's right for the town for all the citizens. Thank you, sir. Mr. Gillespie? Yeah, I think it's very important for uh, council to work with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and it's also very important to work with our EDA, um, both um, as far as the Chamber. You know, they help our local um, business owners in our town. And um, it's always good. It's always a good thing. Thank you. All right. Mr. Ted, how do you feel about the, your working with these key organizations for the development of Front Royal? Everyone work together. So work, we all should work together because this is our community. And uh, we're good. everybody's working together because it brings this place better. And if anyone that says it's bringing suggestions how we can do better, uh, that's uh, how we call it. We this uh, community is the town of Canada. Thank you, sir. Mrs. Thompson? I think that's an important thing. Um, Chamber of Commerce, we have all of our businesses, our members. If we want to understand business issues and things like that, we need to talk to the owners. Um, a great way to do that is to make service and things like that um, and, he and hearing out those issues and taking them back and taking action on them, not just listening and doing nothing. Um, but uh, definitely, I think we all should, we, we have to work together. I mean, the businesses are what is running our towns, what keeps things going, keeps people employed. Uh, keeps us ha having entertaining venues, everything. So I think it's, it's important that I would definitely work with Chamber of Commerce and every other organization in town to accomplish goals. And the goal is improving the lives of the people in our community. Thank you so much. Mr. Morrison, tell us about your involvement with these key agencies and also how you're going to continue working with them if elected. All right, bear with me. I have five points to cover and however long to do that. So five points. I'm going to first, because I want to stay on script, I'm going to identify and create redevelopment in industrial zones in the town based on industrial segments. Second, I'm going to identify the incentives that could be offered to attract these businesses. Third, creation of a town redevelopment authority to work with the EDA. Fourth, move town marketing manager and budget to head up this redevelopment authority. And lastly, I'm going to utilize interns for marketing research projects while they support our region, from our regional universities. And I did it without the LOI. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. And Mr. Gardner, your thoughts? Could you appreciate your question, please? All right, sir. <coughs> the Chamber of Commerce, the FRIBA, the EDA are just a few of the key organizations and agencies in this town. Can you share with us what your involvement and communication with these agencies has been? And if elected, how do you feel you can work with these key organizations for the betterment of Front Royal? I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on TV. EDA, Chamber of Commerce, has specific discipline that enhances the town in many aspects, whether it be from how to 
enhance and build your business to the point where it's recognizable, down to what festivals they offer, what programs they offer, with LFCC right now, and workforce development. Those are the things they're good at. You know, we have issues with certain people, but I will tell you point blank, I'm not going to try to do their job. But if they're there, I'm going to maximize their use for the benefit of this town. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, time now for our closing remarks, and we'll go in the opposite direction that we went. We had our opening remarks. You will have two minutes each for your closing remarks. And Mr. Carter, we'll start with you. Thank you. First and foremost, I'd like to say thank you for coming out here because this is important. Sometimes you need to see a face to know a face. You kind of know what people think when you talk to them. You're able to see them live and in living color most of the time. But they're going to tell you what they're going to offer you as a part of what they intend to do if voted in office. I intend to do two things. Respect your right as, as a member of a community, which includes the business community, the residential community, the law enforcement community, I think as a community, we need to work together. I spent the last three years in this town trying to pull this community together, and it's happening slowly, but it is happening. I'm not going to give you a whole bunch of spiel on what I can do for you if elected. I will show you, and I learned in church, let the works that I've done speak for me. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Morrison, you have two minutes. I'm fired up, okay? So y'all bear with me. I'm passionate about what I do, and I hope, I hope it's uh, portrayed as such. I'm a federal employee. Why should I be penalized because I've chosen to continue to serve our country as a civil servant? Let me explain. Council, council cannot, shall not represent a political party. Council must serve the people, each and every one. Uh, in fact, when I took the oath to become a council, I swore that I would uphold the United States Constitution, the Virginia Constitution, impartial. You can do that without representing a political party. It's not about endorsements. It's not about, it's not about how many signs you're having somebody's yard. It's about qualification. It's about leadership. And my God, it's about some character. I'm the only candidate that has been directly involved in current and future projects without a break in service for the last five years. That is an enormous amount of knowledge and awareness to let go to waste. I am a veteran, civil servant, and now public official. I have been serving my nation and community since I was 17. I know the problems we face. I know the problems we will face. I know what is needed to tackle them. I know things that are coming up from council from my time on planning that will need a clear and understanding in order to be done right and ensure the right amount and type of growth for our town. For instance, there will be a vast growth around Leach Run Parkway, HEPTAP, and Front Royal Limited Partnership, which ties into the need for road improvements around Happy Creek Road. Like I said, I am fired up because it's wrong to penalize somebody because they are either a federal employee or do not get an endorsement from a party. We are one. The vote should be represented by all. And I'm not afraid to take on the unpopular fight. I've been doing it for five years. So you don't have to wonder what I'm going to offer you. Just simply look at my record. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Mrs. Thompson, you have two minutes. Okay, so I'm like fired up, but not because Morrison fired up. So I don't have that much energy tonight. <laughs> but um, some, some takeaways about me. Um, so it's important for, for me and that everyone feels that they have a voice, that someone is listening and that someone will act. I seek to be that person. My motto is boots on the ground. I feel this is the very best way to understand issues and to resolve them. I am not afraid of hard work to research the issues, the solutions, um, to make the hard calls or the decisions. I'm committed to Front Royal and to the citizens to do my absolute best in representing you. I also took some notes from some other things that have come up. And um, I encourage everyone in here, because we're talking about these blighted properties, we're talking about the heroin epidemic, we're talking about all those things, and that's great that they're being brought up. Get out there and do something. And I, I'm sorry I'm getting pushed on. Get out there and do something yourself. If you're not out there, you don't understand that struggle. You, you just don't. Um, I bring a very diverse background to council. I have not always been in a position where we were well off or comfortable. I grew up very poor. 
I understand how these things work and how people are affected and what happens when people don't get involved. I know how my life improved um, and I seek to give back all the time. I've been in homeless shelters. By the way, there are not enough here, even in this region. There are not enough to cover these people. They lack funding for basic stuff like food for the, for the kids that are there, safety issues because they're in domestic violence situations. Get out there and get involved. These things are not going to resolve themselves. We need people. We need bodies. People who care will go out and do that. I encourage every single person, and I know this has nothing to do, well, it does. It has to do with people. Volunteer. Get involved. You don't think you have time? Trust me, you can find time. I have kids. I have a household. I work. I volunteer. You can do it. Do it.
is thank you all for coming tonight. I ask you to go out and vote on Tuesday, November 26th. Thank you so much. <laughs>